in the heart of the jungle, blood will flow. And I mean a fucking lot of blood. Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover Warren 20 here, and I'm here with a brand new movie review. And this movie review is going to be for the fourth installment in an action franchise I am currently reviewing, and one that, believe it or not, guys, did not get released till about 20 years later after the last one, and was um, easily probably one of the most violent movies ever to be released in theaters. And that is none other than what is considered the fourth installment, but is actually called Rambo. The fourth installment of the Rambo franchise is literally only called Rambo. Yeah. Would, seems like this would be foreshadowing a certain sequel trend in horror, which started with a certain 2018 movie. Sound familiar? Yeah. Like, there's... I think this is alternately even called John Rambo in some places. Should have been called John Rambo, or... Hell! Should have been called Rambo 4, because Rambo 4 would have actually been a good title, so people know it's a fourth one, and not a remake. Whatever. It is what it is, but... Let's get on with the plot. Well... In this latest Rambo installment, John Rambo has retreated to a simple life in a rural Thai village near the Burmese border, capturing snakes for local entertainers and transporting roamers in his old PD boat. Following repeated pleas, Rambo helps ferry a group of Christian aid workers into war-torn Burma, where the local Karen villagers are regularly tortured and massacred by Major Tin's sadistic soldiers. The humanitarian mission is going well until the village is attacked and the missionaries are kidnapped, and Rambo is once again asked to transport, but this time a group of mercenaries assembled by the missionaries' as soldier on a deadly rescue mission. This time, he does not stay behind. Yeah. So how is this movie made? Well, originally supposed to be an independent production between New Image and Emmett slash Fury Films for Equity Pictures, it was greenlit and sold before Rocky Balboa would be released in Christmas 2006. In between the making of the third and fourth films in the Rambo franchise, the film's original producer, Calico Pictures, went bankrupt. So in 1997, Miramax purchased the Rambo franchise. The following year, Miramax subs subsidiary Dimension Films intended to make another film, and a writer was hired to write the script, but attempts to make it were de deterred by Stallone, who had stated that he no longer wanted to make action movies. For the time being. In 2005, the studios sold, sold those rights to Millennium Films and New Image. But eventually, Stallone decided to star in the film anyway, and the film got made. But Stallone, Stallone had stated that part of the reason it took so long to produce a fourth film was due to a lack of compelling story that motivated him to return to the role. An early, an early idea was going to have Rambo go to Mexico and rescue a kidnapped young girl. Stallone thought it was good. However, he felt the idea lacked the essence of Rambo, still wanting the character to be a lost man wandering the world. The premise would be later used for the next movie in the series called Last Blood. Stallone got the idea to set the film in Burma for the United Nations, which he later pitched to producers. Producers even found the idea compelling after visiting current refugee camps. Mind Mike King is a former Karen Freedom fighter and stated that if 
He accepted the role of the film's villain. There was a chance some of his family could have been incarcerated in Burma, but accepted the role regardless, feeling that bringing awareness of the Saffron Revolution was important. So eventually, after the film was made and all everything was taken care of, Rambo 4 was eventually released into theaters on January 25th, 2008, to, like predicted for the Rambo sequels, mixed reviews. With praise and criticism aimed at the film's violence, direction, plot, characters, and political commentary. Despite the critics, though, fans of the Rambo franchise absolutely loved it, and even called it the best film in the series since First Blood, because you want to know why. It finally went back to the dark, gritty, serious tone of First Blood, and not being all goofy and campy like First Blood Part 2 and Rambo 3 were. At the box office, it did fairly well. Not as much as the other three movies, sadly, though. Where it made up to $113 million worldwide against a budget of $47 or $50 million. So, compared to 2, 3, and even the first film, it's kind of lower. But it was still decently profitable for what it was. As for my thoughts... This is easily my second favorite of the franchise behind the first film. Like, this movie... You know how a lot of sequels claim they're darker than the first film? And then I actually watch them as like, This movie's not that dark, you fucking idiots. This movie feels way tamer than you guys think. No. When they say this movie is serious, dark, gory as fuck, and very disturbing slash depressing to get through, they're right. They really mean it with this one. Like, this is probably one, without a doubt, one of the most violent movies I've ever seen in my life. Like, there is, there's even more gore than Blade. There's more gore than a lot of gorier movies I like. Like, this movie has more gore than any, probably has even has more gore than any Quentin Tarantino movie. Like, holy hell. So, if you're a gore hound, that should satisfy you. The very serious tone is what you should have for a Rambo movie, especially after the two campy sequels before this. First Blood Part 2 is pretty good, but 3 sucked pretty bad. So this was a nice way they needed to go for the franchise after the last time. Like, truly one of those violent films ever, and I watch a lot of horror movies. I've even, I've even heard news about how violent this movie is, but... Eventually seen it with my own eyes, it brings truth to what has been written and spoken. The machine's guns in this movie do some serious damage to bodies in this movie. Bodies are even blown to pieces with limbs flying skewered and blood splattering everywhere. The climatic battle even shows heads being taken off and a man's stomach, aka the villain's stomach, being ripped open with the guts spilling everywhere out. But... Bullet-riddled bodies are constant in this action. It's definitely not for the faint of heart, and the film attempts somewhat, when people aren't getting annihilated, to shed light on the Burmese situation. The massacre and slaughter of the Karen village, like, around, like, the middle of the movie is horrifying. Like, very, very horrifying. Like, women and children are shot point blank, and Sly as a director rarely pulls a punch. The rapes and humiliations of innocent young women aren't as elaborated on, but we get an idea of what the Burmese soldiers do to them. I mean, you know how they, a lot of action movies just force this stuff in for political reasons? How they do it here works. It really captures the real-life situation going on in certain places like these, and they really did it well. They really wanted to capture what really goes on in areas like Burma, and they succeeded. Stallone does a great job as the director and actor here. He looks strong and menacing, somewhat like a horror icon. A.K. Jason from Friday 13th comes to mind as Stallone wields his machete. And indeed, after years of peaceful existence, minding his own business, Rambo comes to peace with the beast inside and goes absolutely berserk behind a machine gun. And by the way, guys, Stallone originally was not really going to direct this. There were supposed to be some directors planning to do this, but they didn't want to do it, so technically Stallone had to step in and do it by both starring and be directing this film. While being an action picture, Rambo is not without subtlety. Nuance and some depth. The embittered and sour John Rambo is somewhat touched by a missionary and poetic visual realization so light on dialogue that I remember why good films tower when it comes 
to the communication of emotion. Like the missionary, role beautifully rendered by Julie Benz, who, who looks and talents should have on a gold launched her into the A-list, seems to have been perfectly cast. And the final scene of this film is very, very also well done too. I'm going to get to the final scene in a bit. And I really love the mercenaries too. Like they were very badass when they need to be and they were somewhat funny comic release when they needed to be. I even love the villain of this movie, Major Tint. He is easily a very despicable and nasty villain you should easily be terrified of because of how much of a legitimate, really not joking around threat he is throughout the film. While this role did cause the actor who played him some problems, he still he still did very well in the role and he perfectly made him an extremely terrifying villain you should definitely not want to be near. Now, the reason why this doesn't top First Blood is because, yeah, there are some bad qualities I can kind of have, and it's probably the supporting cast members. Like, specifically the church group going to Burma. Like, they were kind of stupid because Rambo technically warned them not to go to Burma, but of course they didn't listen at all. And if you've seen the movie, you pretty much knew what happened to most of them. Yeah. And um, the camera work, um, during the action scenes, the camera work can be a little bit shaky and blurry at times. So sometimes some of the gore is a little hard to see, but I think it might have been the point so that this movie wouldn't get slapped with the NC-17 and could be able to go to theaters. Because I think if the camera had not been shaky, I think this... I don't think this movie would have been able to make it to cinemas. So I think they had to make it shaky at times if it got a little too graphic. Although that's kind of weird though because like, this movie doesn't cut away from anything graphic. No. Almost every single graphic moment is all shown on camera in this entire movie. There's no cutaways. No. You pretty much see all of it. Now the And now on to my other good quality, the final battle. The final battle is easily my favorite final battle of the franchise. The score easily has the most gore of the whole film, while the film in general is just gory from start to finish, and never lightens up on any of it as soon as it all starts. And now let's not forget, one of course I would never forget to talk about, the ending. The ending of this movie is extremely probably the most satisfying ending to a Rambo movie ever. Because after successfully killing the Burmese army, saving the missionaries, John Rambo finally decides to return to his hometown in Bowie, Arizona. And to his and and eventually walks straight down the path leading to his house, and the credits quickly start rolling as he's walking back down to the ranch he lives on. And you like I know they don't just fade to black as soon as the credits are rolling, no. While the credits are rolling, you actually, they actually let you see him walking all the way down to the house. So I think that was a very phenomenal, phenomenal ending to, a, to this film right there. They actually finally gave John Rambo some closure and he got to return home in peace. If the franchise had ended here, I would have been actually pretty happy. I wouldn't have minded that the franchise just stopped here. I mean, Next one wasn't terrible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be reviewing next wasn't terrible, but this movie would have been a really good end to the series. And I, ca I kind of wish, to be honest, guys, as much as I did enjoy Last Blood, this movie did kind of should have end here because this was kind of a bit of a perfect closed book ending for the character. Because, I mean, eventually, 11 years after this, we did get a fifth film. In 2019, which will be the next review. No, no, no. Just a heads up, guys. Those who are saying, oh yeah, I can't wait for Movie Lover 20 to bash this fucker apart. I can't wait for him to slap on the absolute horseshit ranking for the sequel. You're going to, when that review comes, you're, some of you wanting that are going to be pretty disappointed. Because that's review is not going to be a rant. Or a negative review. But you're going to find out why in that video. But that movie can wait for the next video. Because I still need to rewatch that some point tomorrow afternoon or something. So that I can review it. So anyway, here's my final recommendation for Rambo 2008.
So if you're wanting to see how the story arc of John closes off and want to recover after the camping whacked up 1985 to 1988 era of the franchise, then give this serious, violent, and dark sequel and fourth chapter a watch and then add it to your collection because this is easily the perfect wrap up to the character. And if you are wondering how I'm going to rank Rambo, I'm going to give Rambo a 9 out of 10. And there we go. That's it for my review of Rambo 2008. Now, we only have one more Rambo movie to go. And that, of course, is going to be Last Blood. And that's going to be a very, once again, like I said, that's probably going to be a very controversial review. Since it's considered to be the most... By a loss, because a lot of people consider it to be the most hated Rambo movie. But, whatever. You're all going to hear my thoughts on that in that review. But until then, that'll be it for this review. Thank you all for watching. And if you'd like to want to see more, then don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.